In this recording, we look at calculation of probabilities in a Poisson distribution using statistical tables. Just be aware that the way in which such tables are presented for the Poisson distribution can vary a little. However, the tables we're going to use are a fairly standard format and give the general principle of using such tables applied to some examples. First though, let's think about the situation that leads to the Poisson distribution. Events occur at random, but with a constant average lambda per some unit. Random variable x is defined as the number of events that occur per unit. And then the probability that x events occur is given by the formula shown here. e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x, divided by x factorial. So when we're deciding which table to use, the first thing we need to confirm is that it is indeed a Poisson distribution if we're going to use these tables. Then we need to look at whether it is a PDF, which is what we use if we want the probability of exactly some number of events occurring, or a CDF, which is what we use if we want the probability of the number of events occurring being in some range. Then we identify parameters, and with the Poisson distribution, lambda is the parameter. We then use the table to find the corresponding probability. So let's have a look at a few examples to see how this works in practice. So in our first example, a primary school teacher reports that on average there are six students who are late for the first lesson per day. So here then our parameter lambda is the average of six. So lambda equals six find the probability that in this class there are exactly five students who are late for the first lesson on a randomly selected day. Now the full Poisson distribution table that we're working with looks like this. So it has different values of lambda in different rows of the table. So lambda equals six would be down here. But we're just going to focus here to make it a bit easier just on this section of the table. In this case, if we want exactly five students being late, that's a probability of x equal to some particular number. So this will be a case where we use the PDF tables, that is tables for the probability density function. So looking at this part of the table, here is lambda equals six in that row, and then down the column we have the possible values of x. Here we want the probability of x equals five. Looking at the intersection of those values, we find the probability is 0.1606 in this first part of our example. Let's continue on with some follow-on examples from the same scenario. That is, again, we're looking at the data from the primary school teacher who reports that on average six students are late for the first lesson per day on average. So that's lambda equals six again. But in this second example, we want the probability that in this class there are less than eight students who are late for the first lesson on a randomly selected day. So here we're wanting the probability that x is less than eight. But this is a discrete probability distribution that only takes whole number values for the number of students who are late. So probability x less than eight in this distribution is actually the probability of x less than or equal to seven. And here we're after values in a certain range, that is values less than or equal to seven. So here we'll be using the CDF table for the Poisson distribution, that is the table for the cumulative distribution function. Let's have a look at how we use this. And the table is set up in a similar way to the PDF table. And that again, with this particular table we're looking at, different rows show the different values for lambda, which again is six here. So we'd be looking somewhere in this part. But again, let's just focus in on this part of the table to make it a bit simpler. Now the cumulative distribution function does in fact show probability of x less than or equal to some particular value. So therefore, again, we have lambda equals six, and we can just go down to the seven in the x row, which in this case, looking at the intersection of those, gives a probability of 0 
that there will be less than eight students late for the first lesson on a randomly selected day. So let's continue on with the same scenario where on average there are six primary school students late for the first lesson per day and in this case let's find the probability that there are at least eight students who are late for the first lesson. So here again it's going to be to do with the CDF table as we're looking at a range of values. Here we're wanting probability x greater than or equal to 8. But we need to be careful here because our CDF table always shows us the probability of x less than or equal to some value. Now we said that this distribution here can only take whole number values. So the probability of x greater than or equal to 8, that's the opposite of having less than or equal to 7 students late per day. Therefore, this will be 1 minus the probability of x less than or equal to 7, which we can read from the table. In fact, that's what we found before in the previous example. We found the probability of x less than or equal to 7 was 0 0.7440. Therefore, in this case, the probability will be 1 minus 0 0.7440, giving us a probability in this example of 0.2560.